In this video, I'm going to help guide you through the process of making your cell mini mural. Now, it's a long project, and I recommend doing it in at least two sessions. So, we need to take a break to stop the video and come back to it later. So, you can see that I've taped two pieces of paper together. I like to use cardstock. I find it's a little bit more forgiving if you need to erase a lot. You don't wear it thin like you would with paper. And I've put some kind of thick clear tape. You can see it shining there across the whole back. First I put a little tiny piece to keep them from slipping apart. Make sure you get them nice and tight so that when you turn it over it's almost seamless. Seamless as possible. The first thing we're going to draw is the first thing we learned about and you're going to make the these lines very very light you want to start out with just some sketchy lines here because uh, you're going to erase some of them for sure some of them might be keepers but some of the lines I can already tell you you're going to erase so you want to leave about maybe an inch a couple centimeters from the edge come in about to here now I may have to draw a little bit darker just so you can see it on the on the camera but you want to go very very light so you can erase and you want to indicate where your membrane is going to be we're going to fill the page we're going to make the cell large and it's going to be sort of a rectangular type cell it's not going to be any particular cell just an average cell a cell that doesn't really exist kind of a generic cell so kind of round the edges though remember go light I'm going to be having to draw darker so you can see it like this kind of you can kind of sketch like that if you want sort of sketch loosely down here just to kind of indicate about where we're going to be going with this and we will use the space outside of the membrane at the very end okay so that's about where my cell is going to be on the page and then I'm going to go up to this corner our first little drawing is going to be right here I'm going to zoom in so now you can see I'm zoomed in to this upper left corner and this is where we're going to put our first inset an inset is usually a circle where you put something very small when you want to magnify it so here at this scale I can't see all the phospholipids so we know that a membrane is made of the phospholipid bilayer but they're going to be so tiny here it just looks like a line so we're going to have to use an inset now I have a circle guide uh, if you have one of these that's great you can use it you could also use a compass or uh, you could trace around something if you have uh, or inside of something for example if you have a roll of tape now this is way too big but if you have something about the right size you can use that or you can freehand it if you're pretty good at drawing circles you can just you know draw a circle so right here in the middle of our line now I'm not sure this is yeah I'm going to use this size we're going to draw now this line can be more firm because this is a final line. Cut going out there a little bit. This is going to be an area where we're going to zoom in so we can erase this line as I promised we're going to erase it in some places. So imagine that we have a magnification device where we can see all the little phospholipids. So this is where you can draw all the stuff you learned about. I suggest kind of making two lines here that indicate kind of where the top and bottom of your membrane is going to be. Real sketchy, which is for you to help you stay straight. And then this is where you're going to draw your phospholipids. Again, you might want to you might want to go a little bit light first. And put all the little heads bottom the heads at the top so we might want to put some uh, proteins in here and then you have all the little tails pointing inwards like that 
Now before I finish all the tails, maybe I will put in some some uh, proteins. So remember we have some proteins that just kind of stick into the top. I'm going to make one sticking out like that, and it's kind of wedged in there. Sometimes it has a little helix shape that sticks down in there. So this will be a peripheral protein on the outside. And then maybe I have one, you know, I think I'll erase a couple of these heads. And I'll make a little portal going all the way through. I'm going to make a little channel. Remember, there's lots and lots of portals. So let's see. Kind of looks like a hot dog, I know, but it's kind of shadowy. I've cut it in cross section and you're kind of looking in at the hole. And maybe I might put some little molecules going down through it like that. I don't know what they are, just some little molecule. I'm going to put a little identity protein. Remember the little MHC1 flag, the ID flag. I'm going to put it right in here. I'm just going to start it down in. It pokes down into the tails a little bit, comes out, and it's kind of like a funny cloverleaf shape thing like that. But then it stops. It doesn't, it doesn't have two sticks. It just has the one stick and it goes up around and then stops like that. So that's the flag that says I belong to the body. There I can draw my circles a little better. We'll do lots of erasing in this drawing. So I gotta have a good eraser. I love these white kinds. If you can get the white rather than the colored, the white ones work better. Just a little chip tip there. Okay. And then maybe on the bottom, remember there's little proteins that stick off the bottom too, and some of them attach to cytoskeleton. Like that. They might have things going out from it. Cytoskeleton. We'll draw cytoskeleton more later at the end of the drawing. We'll put a few sticks in there. Okay. So you can add anything else you have room for. Yours does not have to look exactly like mine. This is for you to record what you remember from that chapter. So you can pause and add as much as you want. But right now I'm going to go on to the next step, which is going to be putting in the nucleus. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here. We're going to go to the center for this. Actually, let's zoom all the way out and show you the whole page here. So we are going to put the nucleus in the center. It's not always in the center of every uh, cell, but here we are going to locate it in the center for a good reason, because we're going to make use of this crack. As long as we have this crack running down here, we might as well incorporate it. So the nucleus is going to be about the size of your fist, something like that, okay? And you don't need a circle guide or anything for this, because in real life, a nucleus isn't perfectly circular. See, this isn't real life. These are our, our little artificial circles for our drawing. But the nucleus is a real thing. So it's not going to be perfect. But we're going to put it right in the center on either side of that crack. You can see my lines there. We're going to make them kind of light because we're going to possibly erase some of them. Adjust. You get that kind of approximate circle there. Okay, now I'm going to zoom back in a little bit, and we'll do this side first. Let's go ahead and draw a line right down there on that crack. And this side is going to show you the outside of the nucleus, and here we'll have the inside. So let's go ahead and actually firm this up. And then I'm going to shade mine a little bit to make it kind of look 3D. If you turn your pencil on the side, sometimes you can, it works better. You can kind of go like this and you've done any shading. What you want to do is make the outside a little darker like this. And then as you go in, it's kind of tricky with with this shape and with this type of a pencil. This isn't going to be easy. so. If you have a nice soft pencil, you can take your finger and kind of smear. That really helps to make the shading gradual. And the trick is to 
to to make it so that you can't tell where the dark and light end. It's kind of just so gradual that you it doesn't look like a stripe. If it looks like a stripe, like up here, I'll make it, see if I'm trying to shade like this, and it looks like a stripe. Okay, so you want to You want to fade it. You can always go back in with your eraser or erase it like that. Okay, so I will leave it up to you how much you want to fuss with this. If you really, really struggle with drawing and don't like shading, uh, it's okay. You don't have you don't have to do it at all if you really, really don't want to. But it really helps to see that this is the outside. There. Okay, so that kind of looks like a ball. Now, as we learned, the nucleus has lots of pores, little holes. Now these are going to be a little too large for our scale, but that's okay. We need to see the fact that we know that they're there. And there'll be thousands of these, but this is enough. Just make kind of like this around. Now here's a little trick to make helping the nucleus to look 3D. When you get to the edge, make them smaller and flatter and closer together. We'll get a little section done and you'll see what I mean. Make them smaller and so you make them over near the edge, they're going to be closer, much closer together. Do you see how that helps make it look like it's curving around? Okay, we'll finish that main part. And of course, the pores. We do a close up of one of those. Remember, they have uh, like a little guardian. Looks like they're a little basket on the inside, and they're they're carefully controlled. There's proteins around them that control what's going in and out. And often you need it's almost like you need a, a pass card, a key, or a, a special password or something. You could think of it to get in and out. And actually, some viruses, a lot of things they can do is they're sneaky. Viruses are always sneaky in some way or other. They're sneaky. Every one of them has a different way of being sneaky. And they can either steal the passcode. Somehow they can steal it from other cell parts to get in and out of the nucleus. They can trick the nucleus into letting the virus get inside. Of course, that's very, very bad. So they can get into your DNA on all kinds of terrible stuff. Okay, so there we have the exterior of the nucleus. And let's go ahead and put the smooth endoplasmic reticulum on this side. So, so coming out of it, we'd have this. This is going to be the side we're going to do the rough. But we'll do the smooth over here. Um, we'll talk more about this over here. We'll really make you be able to see how it's continuous. But over here, let's just put your pencil down and then don't pick it up and just draw some nice squiggles over here and you can kind of make these however you want don't try to copy mine but just don't pick your pencil up don't pick your pencil up don't pick your pencil up until you get back almost to the same spot but leave a little bit okay i'll draw another bit down here remember no picking your pencil up until all your squiggles are done Don't make this too large because we're going to draw a lot of other stuff on this side. There. Okay, and I'm not going to do any labeling right now. Uh, I'm going to wait until all the parts are in and then we can go back because if I draw something, label it, I might need to erase the label to use that space. So we'll do the labeling at the end but we know that that is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, what about this other side here? Let me zoom in a little bit more. Okay, so let's draw the rough ER first, and then we'll go back in and we'll draw the DNA and the nucleus. So put your pencil down right up here at the top, and we're going to draw the inside actually you might want to come in just a little bit we're going to be drawing two lines I'll start them like this we're going to be drawing two lines 
So this outer line is going to be a continuation of the line around this side. So you remember that the nucleus has a double phospholipid layer. So we already have a double layer, but it's got two of these. So here's one and here's the other. Now the inner one, so let's make the inner one go around like this. It is solid, basically. And when you come back around to this side, come a little bit short of here, right? So we're going to have these two lines sticking out. Oops. This outer line. So there's the inner membrane. Then with this outer one, we're going to do the same thing that we did over here. We're going to make another endoplasmic reticulum. You put your pencil down and then don't pick it up until you're done making all your squiggles. And don't concentrate on mine and what I'm doing. Don't try to copy mine. Yours can look squiggly however it wants to look squiggly. So just try to make these nice smooth curves. And then you come back around, you finally get back around. Then actually on this side, oops, I shouldn't have, oh, I can erase. When you come back around, you actually, I'm going to, instead of connecting here, so that I'm going to keep going. I shouldn't have picked my pencil up except I had to erase, but keep going and keep that second curve going. See around, I've got that second layer like that, and then I'm going to make another little section here. And then make a lot of these things. Don't go too far out into the cell. Some cells are practically filled with this, but ours need the space. And then come all the way back around, and you don't pick your pencil up until you reach all the way around and finish, you come back to here. Okay, so from here, it's all one line down to here. Now this is going to be the rough endoplasmic reticulum, so we can add some dots along it for ribosomes. And you'll remember that these ribosomes are the ones who are making proteins where when they started making the protein, the first couple amino acids had a, a special message that said, take me to the ER. And so the ribosome docks on the ER, and it spits a protein into the endoplasmic reticulum tubes. It, it's like a knitting machine that's knitting into these tubes. Okay, so there's our rough ER. And it's only called rough because when they looked in the microscope, they saw these dots. They didn't even know what they were. They were like, oh, it looks rough. So they called it the rough ER. All right, now for the inside. Of course, you know what's in the nucleus is mainly the DNA. So this cell is not doing mitosis right now, so the DNA is just going to look like a plate of spaghetti. It's not going to be lined up. Remember, in mitosis, it lines up and makes those nice little X-shaped chromosomes. But here, it's just going to be spaghetti. It's all going to be loosely arranged. And actually, amazingly enough, this looks all random and messy, but actually, like you see here where I've got like several lines crossing, it's not an accident that these particular lines are crossing in a real cell. In my cell, it was accidental. But there will be sections of code along here that called genes that will be related. So some proteins that need to be made, you need little bits of information from this part, from this part, and this part, and they're all kind of located together. If you stretch the spaghetti out, the parts will be far apart, but because it's all coiled up, those parts just happen to cross at the same location, and that makes it easy, or easier for the messenger RNA to do its thing and all that and to get the protein made. Okay, so jumble jumble, and we are going to put in the nucleolus, which is a particularly dense area of DNA. So I'm just going to make 
I'm gonna go over and over here. Just draw more more scribbles. You see how it's kind of looking like a darker area, nucleolus. Of course, that's where the instructions are for making ribosomes. So just make it. You can kind of squint, pull your head back. So yeah, I can. I can see it's a little bit darker. All right, there's my nucleolus. Now we did learn what DNA looks like. We know it's. We know much more detail than shown here. So we're going to use our insets again. So we're going to circle a little piece. Any piece will do. Just put a circle around one strand. That's what we're going to zoom in on. And then, uh, let's see. Yep. Okay, I'm going to cut enough space there. I'm going to get my circle guide or whatever you're using, or just draw a circle. This one's going to be a little bit smaller than this one. I'm going to choose uh, just a little bit smaller one. So you could want a circle that's going to fill right about like this area. So maybe this one. Okay, draw in like that. And then you can either point to the circle or you can have the circle pointing out like this. So this circle is going to be the same area but it's bigger now so we can see it. So now we can draw it as chromatin. So remember chromatin is when DNA gets wrapped around those histone spools so we would have it squiggling around and then being wrapped and then wrapped and wrapped. So let's make make our uh, kind of look like that and you can even just kind of go like this looping like that that's good enough All right so that's chromatin of course those little histone spools have to open up sometimes to allow the dna to be used to make mrna all right so maybe i'll make my circle take in several of those little areas Make that a little bit bigger. Chromatin. Now we still can't see all those beautiful little helix shapes, so let's make another uh, inset here. So take that same, see, the same circle size. All right, I'm going to draw another one right next door. And then let's circle one little piece here. I'm going to zoom in on that one little piece here and that is where we're going to see finally our nice DNA shape so make a line like that and then if you go back over like that it's an easy way to make a helix shape put some rungs in I think there's actually like 10 rungs to a full twist but every jaw is going to be great and then we could show that, that we also know that there's proteins around it. You could put in some lumpy chaperone proteins on either side of it. Remember it's covered with proteins that protect it and control when it gets opened up. It's got all kinds of chaperone proteins around it, which they don't show. Those kid books, they never tell you that. That comes as a surprise in college, but you won't be surprised because you know there are lots of chaperone proteins around DNA. Now, if you want to go on and do another close-up and draw some of the what the rungs look like, the phosphates, the sugars, you can do that also. However, for the sake of time, we're going to go on and I'm going to show you where to put your Golgi body. So back out again. And we are going to put a Golgi body right here next to the rough ER because, you know, a lot of times the rough ER sends vesicles over to be processed by the Golgi body. So let's, let's take this little part of the rough ER and let's make some little bulges coming out. Like these are going to be little vesicles. And then some actual vesicles going over like this. I'll zoom back in a little bit. OK, 
Okay. And then let's see, we're going to just make some sketchy lines showing about where our gold dew body is going to go. Something like this is going to go kind of right in here like this. And remember that the ones on the edges kind of curve out like this. This one will kind of curve like that. And this one will kind of curve like this. And then the ones in the middle, this will be a middle pancake like that. Kind of roughly sketch out where the pancakes will go. And then this one, this is called the cis cisterna. Let's make some vesicles that are kind of merging in. So you make some bumps there. And then we can erase our little lines later. Okay. And there's the vesicles going and merging. And then, let's see, you can still see that a little bit better there. Now you can take your pencil and kind of trace over your Put some bumps on the other side as well. The trick will be to get the same number. One, two, three, four, five. One, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. One, two. Now for your final, final drawing, when you get all these, your whole cell done, you can always go over some of these lines in pen. If you really want to get rid of the little pencil lines, you can trace over everything with a very fine pen. And then that way you can just really go at it with an eraser. But it's okay if there's a few sketchy lines there too. It'll be all right. Pencil drawings are nice in their own right. Okay. The more you draw over it, the better you'll remember it. Okay, so we've got some vesicles merging into the Golgi body. And if you want, you can put some little things going on here. There's some little enzymes inside. Remember, it's full of little, little workers, little robot guys that are doing all kinds of things. Some of these guys are adding sugar tags, which act like mailing labels. Some of these guys are... Um, maybe folding proteins. Some of them are, they're adding phosphate groups. They do all kinds of little jobs. So the little proteins float through here. And when they come out on the other side, let's make some vesicles coming out. Okay, they're all tagged to go different places, right? They have a little tag, a little tag coming off them. So maybe this one might be floating over to the edge. It might say, deliver me outside the cell. So I could even make a there's one that's kind of bubbling out on the membrane. Some of them are floating over here. Woo, they're going to go bubbling out, get delivered outside. Some will be delivered inside the cell. And of course, what is taking them? They're not going on their own in general. They can float around. Maybe they'd eventually bump. But generally what's taking them is there will be a microtubule, right? And a little motor protein. We'll do a little enlargement showing little motor proteins later with their cytoskeleton going out. They're going to be transport Even in here, there's cytoskeleton going across. Sorry. There you go. So now let's go to the opposite side of the cell and put in a mitochondria over here. see that's how much space we have in this corner so let's make the mitochondria take up about this much space so it's kind of be sort of like a kidney bean shaped thing so I'm gonna make mine it can be just an oval some of them are kind of round they, they vary greatly in shape but it's about where I'm gonna put my mito and I'll can zoom in a little bit now 
and I'm going to divide it in half, like we did with the nucleus. Let's divide it in half and make the top half will look like the outside, and it's 3D, it's round, so I'm going to shade mine a little bit. And then it's 3D, but it's also kind of transparent. So when you see it under the microscope, you see basically the matrix thing showing through. And it looks like it has like stripy lines. So this is the way artists always draw it. You just draw a line in from this side and then draw in a line in from this side and this side. And when you see something that has this pattern, you always know it's a mitochondria. This is just like the standard way that artists draw it. So everybody knows that's a mitochondria. Now the bottom, I can actually draw like that, is going to be the inside. And you remember we have that wavy, it kind of goes like this kind of might remind you of an endoplasmic reticulum, and it is made of membrane. So you kind of loop around like that. Like that. And inside, they call it the matrix. And the main point is that there are little proteins embedded in the membrane. Just like we have up here, proteins embedded in the membrane, but what are these proteins that are embedded in this membrane, right? They're special. So let's put a couple of dots right on one of those lines, and we're going to use one of our insets so we can see. Put a little circle around it, and I'll get my circle guide, and let's see, we want to put a circle that's about... Well, maybe I've got a lot of space here. Maybe I'll be generous. I'll do one that's kind of like that. Maybe just a tad smaller. Maybe that one. Okay. And then this little circle here is going to be going up to that one. So, remember what goes here? Those little dots are the electron transport chain. So remember, the electron transport chain is embedded into a piece of membrane. So, like the other piece of membrane that we drew, we're going to have like little circles, a little bit of membrane. But before I draw all the circles, let's see. There are three pumps and an ATP synthase machine. So I'm going to draw three pumps. Now these really are not a good representative of the actual shapes. The first one is actually kind of wide and long, but it's okay. We know that there's three pumps, proton pumps, right? And then there's that funny egg beater shape thing. So if I get a little closer in here. So the top part of the egg beater kind of sits in the membrane like this. It's got a little stick and then it's got the ball shape thing down here. The egg beater part sticks down there. And then there's that little handle part that goes like that. Now we know that these are proton pumps. Let's see the first one, there's a little shuttle, the first one that goes across the top, there's a little shuttle bus, a little shuttle bus here. Kind of need a sharp pencil for this. And the proton pumps, I'm going to make a little arrow and some dots. They are pumping protons up here. Lots and lots of protons up here. A few down here because that's where they're coming from, but I'll whole lot up here. Okay, so then once I have my pumps in, I can make my little membrane circles. There we go, a little phospholipid. Make sure your pencil is sharp, as I said, so you can draw. Accurately. Okay, 
maybe should have made the circle even a little bit bigger. But all right, protons. So don't forget, I'm gonna write protons in there. All right, we don't need to know the name of those pumps. If you want to label them, you can always go back and do that. Three proton pumps and ATP synthase. And so we could um, we could even make some little ATP molecules down here, like a circle and a couple little circles. So it's snapping the third phosphate back onto, and I'll make one looking like it's coming right out there. ATP, they're making ATPs. Now you can pause the video and spend more time on that, but I'm going to move on to show you the next thing. We want to go down here below the mitochondria. We're going to draw a lysosome right here. Just draw a nice oval and split it in half and make one half the outside. Shade it a little bit. Okay. Don't have to add any extra dots or anything. Now it does have little proton pumps embedded in there, but let's just leave it smooth. And then what does it have on the inside? It has lots of little enzymes, little, just make them look like wiggly whatevers little tiny robot enzyme guys that are specialized for tearing apart molecules. Some of these little enzymes are going to take apart fats, and some are going to take apart proteins, and some are going to take apart sugars, and some are going to take apart nucleic acids, break down like RNA. So this is basically the stomach of the cell, right? This is very important, especially in cells in your immune system. This is where germs end up. You want to get rid of a virus for good? You toss it into a lysosome, and the lysosome digests it down to pieces. And all the little pieces of the virus, the virus is just made out of protein and DNA. Same stuff your body's made out of. It's just the arrangement that's bad. But the pieces are fine. It's like you can make a Lego warship and then you can tear it apart and make a building and you can tear that apart and make a, some, something else. So the pieces are fine. So this guy recycles even bacteria and viruses and then your body can use little parts to make, make good things. And then right below that, in this space, let's put a peroxisome. Another little oval down here. And we're going to draw a line. Make sure we can see that this is the exterior view. It's easier to shade smaller things. This one's not going to be quite so much of a problem to shade. There we go. And then the inside of a peroxisome, it does a lot of tearing apart. Remember, it can deal with fats. It breaks down alcohols and things. It, it gets rid of the toxic substances if you get venom or all kinds of toxic things. So it has lots of little enzymes, but they say that it has more of a crystalline matrix. Now, I don't know exactly what that would look like. Let's just put some like hash lines to show that it's not, it's not like liquidy. I think this one, the lysosome is maybe more of like what we'd imagine, like an egg or something that's kind of got a liquidy interior. And this one maybe is not quite so. So if we just put some lines like that, to show the inside and then all the little enzyme guys. Now we still have a lot of empty space and we can fill up a lot of that with some more insets. They can be any size, but what I want you to do is to start remembering more details. What else is floating around in here? Like down here, I think I'll add a fairly large inset that shows a ribosome, because we have free-floating ribosomes. So let's zoom in and do what a ribosome would look like while it's doing translation. So a ribosome has two halves. There's the big half, there's the little half. And 
and it's going to have messenger RNA feeding through it. That's the instructions. You make a line out and then just little lines like that. This will be the messenger RNA feeding through. And then there will be lots of amino acids floating around. You need the raw materials to make proteins. So hopefully the lysosomes will have done some digesting. All right, so these are aminos. And you need some transfer RNAs floating around also. So we can even make, let's make a little squiggle dot. Make a line out and show, put a bigger one like this. Show transfer RNA. I'm going to make it look like if you just think of those gingerbread men, sort of like that, transfer RNA, and then it's got an amino acid hanging on it right there. Transfer RNA. And of course, it's made of RNA. Think about it, transfer RNA. It's made of RNA. So if you want to get really detailed, you can put little lines around on it. It's actually RNA that's curled up to form that shape. Okay, so you've got lots of these little transfer RNAs floating around, and each one is able to carry a particular kind of amino acid. So you need, a, you know, for 20 amino acids, you need at least 20 transfer RNAs. And of course, out of the top here, then it's going to be coming our finished polypeptide string of amino acids. Is putting all these amino acids together. To make a very long string and of course the string will probably fold up into a particular shape. I'll go ahead and label that now ribosome, aminos, there's our polypeptide. So let's put some other little ribosomes floating in the area. This is a zoomed in one. But we'd have ribosomes all through The cytosol, part of the cytoplasm. Ribosomes. We've just zoomed in on one of them. Now you can put them all over your entire cell, or you can kind of make this specialized area down here. It's going to have a lot of dots all over, so eventually. Let's go over here, right while we're near this area also, and let's put in the centrosome. It's a blob like this, a blob of protein goo. I could even make it look a little bit 3D. Looks like a blob. Imagine a big sticky blob of jelly. And then inside we have those centrioles, and they look like two barrels. So if you just make, make an oval, and then going out like this, lots of stripes. If you want to get really detailed, you can make all the little circles around there, but you don't have to. And then going the other way, put a circle or an oval up here, going down. They always sit at right angles. And of course, they're made of basically of microtubules, so they would be the, the organizing center. So they would can make some microtubules kind of going out from them like that. And of course, they have their most important function during mitosis. So they're kind of resting right now. Just kind of draw like that. So the centrosome is the whole thing, and the centrioles are the barrels. So what else could we put floating around here? All the things we got floating around. Lots of raw ingredients. We could use this space down here to show an inset for... Let's see, I'll use a smaller one. I'll use a couple insets. We would have lots of... So sugars floating around, glucose. If you draw little hexagons, 
That's kind of like the international symbol for sugar, the hexagon. So I know hexagons aren't the easiest things to draw, but we would not be able to see these without a super duper magnifier here with our inset. So I'm going to write glucose. All right, so we've got sugars floating around, and we'd have fats and, and pieces of protein. We already have like amino acids. We could draw on this one. We could just draw little circles. We have aminos floating everywhere. And let's find another place where we have an empty spot. Up here is a nice empty spot. Let's draw a circle and put in something else that's floating would be um, nucleotides would be floating around. They'd be um, inside here too, but see a nucleotide is a phosphate, sugar, and base. So they usually, let's draw the sugar as a hexagon. It would be ribose or deoxyribose. And then it would have a little phosphate hanging on to it. Let me see if I can zoom in a little. So we got a phosphate, a sugar, and then the base will just draw a line out like this. And you can write a letter like A or C or G or T or U. Draw another one here, a little hexagon, a little circle. We'll make this one G. So this is the way they usually float around. You could, I guess, have a base floating by itself, but from what I've read, more often you're going to find these nucleotides. And they're half of a rung, right? Half of a rung of DNA or a whole rung for RNA. You just need one of these. So some of these would be ribose for RNA, some would be deoxyribose for DNA. Of course, you'd have some of these we could put also in the nucleus you need to have some of these for when it's time to duplicate okay you'd also have some fats let's see where else do I have a little section here's one over here I can draw a little circle here it has some fats floating around possibly even in little little vesicles and chylomicrons but so let's see let's draw a fat as a triglyceride which would be just a bar like the hanger bar with three wiggly lines like that. Glycerol with three fatty acids hanging down. So it's triglyceride, three, three fats usually the form they're stored in. So the bar at the top, the glycerol, that's the same bar, right, that the in the phospholipid molecule the glyceride is the one that reaches and grabs the phosphate on top, and it has two of these. But here, one of the hanger bars is turned down and it's hanging on to a third fatty acid. So these could be turned into phospholipids, or they can be burned for energy. They could be, the fatty acids could be burned in mitochondria. Okay, so these are fats. Oops, I forgot to put up here. I'm going to go ahead and label this now. Nucleotides. We might also have, let's see, there's another spot down here. You might want to put some miscellaneous enzymes. We don't know what they're doing. They're just all kinds of enzymes that do particular jobs might be floating around. Enzymes going about their business doing their jobs. wonder where they might be. Of course they're made out of protein. They were made by the ribosomes with information from the DNA. Okay, you can add more little features as you think of them. But right now I'm going to show you how to finish the outside. 
let's show the process of pinocytosis so somewhere, maybe multiple places on your outside line. Make a little place that dips in a little bit. Just zoop, come in like that. Whoop, come in. And then you can maybe put something in there, a couple little dots. This is how the cell is sampling. It's taking in little sips of its environment. You could also make a few bubbling out the other way. You can make some exocytosis going on. I know we did on this side, but you could also put some little particles in here. So this is exocytosis. You could call this endocytosis or pino, P-I-N-O, cytosis. So we'll just kind of do that every once in a while. Now you may want to add some little little things on the outside. We know that the cell is actually covered with little sugars hanging off. Some of these will be MHC1 identity flags, ID flags for the immune system to feel. There would be Somewhere in here you have a you'd have a lipid raft. In fact, you could do another inset maybe over here. You might want to show. You can always change your mind and add more. You could draw a little. You could draw a lipid raft. Do the other part like that. Lipid raft. They have various proteins in it. You don't have to do this, but like I said, you can. The whole point of this is to showcase all your knowledge, everything you've learned. So, if you think of something that I haven't covered, go ahead and add it. Now, in let's see, I'll do it in this corner. You can do it in all these corners. I'm going to imagine that there is a cell next door. There's the edge of the next cell. And let's say that these are skin cells. They're kind of boxy, so we'll, we'll have them connected like they're skin cells. So there's little kind of ropes connecting, or cables stretching from one to the other, but they have little plates on the inside like this to help distribute the weight. And this is a basic engineering principle you'd see in other places in life. Okay, so I didn't realize that while I was drawing away on my Desmosomes, my camera had run out of memory on the memory card. So let me show you what I, what you missed while I was drawing with no memory card. I added some more Desmosomes. Remember I was drawing them down here. I added some more. And just for fun, I added some bacteria over here. If you want to draw some invaders trying to get into your cell, a bacteria would be about this big. Some of them are just little circles. Some of them are longer, bacillus, and they have little flagella, like tail-like things, made out of essentially microtubules. So some of them have little flagella on either end, some have multiple flagella, some look like that, some just look like this or just look like a rod like that. Some of them, unfortunately, like Lyme disease, is a little wiggly spirochete, nasty little things. So you can do that, or you can add more, like we're talking about little 
interesting sugar tags. You can make more things coming off like that. And you can add more in the space here. And then finally, you can go back and you can label. You can start labeling everything. Now you know how much space you've got. And the very last thing we're going to add is the cytoskeleton. So all this empty space will have something in it when you're done. So we're not going to worry about the direction of the lines. You know, some of them, of course, come out like this directional out of the microtubules. And when you see pictures of them when they've been stained with the fluorescent dyes, sometimes, you know, there's a pattern. They'll, they'll kind of be going around the nucleus or something. But for our purposes, if we just draw them straight, it'll be okay. Um, we're just going to pretend they're stretching from little attachments here to the other side of the cell. So what you want to do is you want to draw a line and stop when you come to something. Stop, stop, stop. So that way the cytoskeleton will kind of be behind all these other things and it won't uh, interfere with seeing all the nice little pictures of the organelles. So let's see, I'll put one in here. Now a few of them can go on top. Of course, in the real cell, they'd be going over and under and everything. But if we cannot draw on top of our nice insets, that would be nice. So stop and come to an inset. Now, if you want to add one more inset somewhere, um, we didn't add this before because we didn't have the cytoskeleton in, but if you'd like to draw a motor protein walking along the cytoskeleton, uh, let's see, where am I going to draw a nice, some kind of an empty place here? Up in this corner, it looks like I have a little bit of space. So I'm going to draw a little tiny, now this would be like, almost right size, a little tiny motor protein and it's carrying a little vesicle. So I'm going to draw a little inset here to show it. I might have to erase a few of those cytoskeleton lines, but there we go. Clear it out. And Here's the microtubule, I can actually see. Now, of course, there's three kinds of cytoskeleton. Like there's actin, filaments, the real thin ones, intermediate, and microtubules. So what we've drawn here is mainly the microtubules. So here's my little motor protein guy, little kinesin maybe. He's got these little heads that look like feet, and he's carrying the vesicle. I'm sure you probably remember this. I think this is one of the most memorable parts of the whole class is learning about motor proteins. So there, a little inset showing my motor protein. So it's up to you how many set of skeleton lines you want to put in, how much you want to add along the outside, and then don't forget to put the date on the back. You might want to write today's date and the year. I know you think you'll never forget when you did it, but uh, in the future you might be glad you did that to, to sign it and date it on the back.